So a recent measure by the U.S. and the United Kingdom to restrict electronic devices on flights from certain overseas airports were led by a new threat from ISIS, according to reports from ABC News, who cited similar um, familiar sources familiar with the intelligence. The U.S. government maintained a new threat intelligence earlier. They new threats, right? They we got new threats, and the new threats said that ISIS groups have developed explosives that can be disguised within electronic devices. So, the Homeland Security yesterday banned all electronic devices bigger than a cell phone from the cabins of direct flights to the United States from 10 airports in a number of Muslim-majority countries, Cairo, Istanbul, Kuwait City, Doha in Qatar, Casablanca in Morocco, Amman in Jordan, Ramadi and Jadi in Saudi Arabia, Dubai, and Adusa, and, ooh, I'm off, uh, I can't remember, what's the other Arab rumors covering? Well, I can't pronounce it right now. What does it say? Abu Dhabi. There we go. <laughs> Dubai and there Abu Dhabi. Go. In the United Arab Emirates. <laughs> it's been a long day, people. Um, what's your take on that, Rich? So, I'm a, I'm a, it's tough to say because, I, listen, I'm not an intelligence expert. I don't know how credible the threat is. Um, I, I know that sometimes things like this are done mainly for optics and to look like you're tough on terror. And, and you're really not. And you're really not. I mean, I don't know what the odds are of this scenario actually happening. Well, this, and that's my problem. Like, that goes, like, here's my problem with this, all of these stupid bands. I travel a lot. And as a lot of times you see me not sitting here at the follow show because I'm in, you know, I'm either giving a speech in another part of the country. And, like, you go to the airport, they make you take your shoes off. They wand you down. I bring my protein powder. And they, I get a secondary scan. And they swipe it down. And you're like, does all of that really, like, does that really make us safer or does it make us feel safe? I don't know. Because what's the difference? Like, the question I always ask myself is, what's the difference between three one-ounce bottles or three, <laughs> three, three-ounce bottles and one nine-ounce bottle? What, what's the difference? I don't know. I mean, and here's the thing. Like, you say, does this make, is, is this making us safer or does it feel safer? Like, I personally, and maybe I'm wrong, maybe they don't publicize it, but I'm not hearing stories from the TSA about how once a week they thwart a terrorist from blowing up, you know, a domestic because flight. Because of a one, a three ounce bottle of lotion. Sure. Or like even them finding a bomb in like a freaking bag or something. Like it's not happening. And like, I mean, listen, don't get me wrong. Prevention is better than cure because there's no cure once a plane's blown up. But this situation is very interesting. Um, now, these are choice airports from places where they could be hubs where someone right. who could fly in. Now, I mean, I, and I will say that I've been, I just came from the Dubai. I was just in Dubai, in the Dubai airport. Well, you'd have Dubai, to spend that whole flight Doha. with no laptop, and you'd be very sad about that. I know, because I spent half my time on the internet in my, cause in my flight from Doha to Philadelphia. Yeah. I mean, if, if you're an international business traveler, and listen, we're not trying to make this all about the international business traveler, but the vast majority of people who are flying to and from Doha are business travelers. Yeah, and I was on business. You know, an 18-hour flight or however long it is, um, you want to spend a day working while you're on that flight. Yeah, you, know? you can get a you lot can of only watch, You can only watch so many movies and pass out so many times. Before yeah, I mean, eventually, get like, you get, like, you get at a point, and anybody who's been on a flight from Doha or Qatar... I mean the same place, excuse me, or Abu Dhabi or Dubai, would tell you there's a part of the flight where you're just like, oh my God, why am I still on this plane? It doesn't matter what <laughs> class of service you're in. Yep. And I was in a higher class of service, right? But even then, like, I woke up and I was just like, like why am I still here? Because like, I, I, like, the plane took off, I ate as much as possible, <laughs> I drank as much as possible, watched the movie, passed out for maybe two, three hours, Woke back up, looked around, and I'm like, I'm still <laughs> in the like damn plane. You were like 10 hours to go. <laughs> <laughs> then like, at the, like the six hour mark, I passed out again, I woke up, and I'm like, damn, still three more hours? <laughs> this sucks. So, like, and I was able to go on my computer, we were working on a couple proposals, I think I Rich sent me some emails, I responded to the emails, yep. on my preparation to come back to the States, and so I find this to be troubling, and I really feel as though like nothing is going to happen. Yeah, because I mean, then what? Like, because then the question you ask yourself is: So what happens when a person puts a laptop in the the, the, the suit in the in the in the cabin in the cargo hull? Right. Like, I mean, couldn't they just figure out a way to make the bomb detonate like two hours from when you put it in the cargo hull? Yeah. I mean, that's that's the concern, right? And because it's not like right now the law is written where it's mandatory that you have to check it. Right. Like, you can bring it 
up to the gate and then right. give it to the flight attendant and, and I will it say, the plane. And what I will say to you is this, and what I will give Dubai, um, not Dubai, excuse me, the Doha airport, is that their security is like, their, their security is on point. Yeah. Because when I went through, I, I connected in, in Doha, we got off the plane from Maputo, which is from Africa where I came from, we got to the terminal, went, went through customs, cleared customs and everything, and then after clearing customs, <laughs> Um, we're getting new lights, folks. <laughs> After clearing customs, then to get back into the gate to like get on my flight, I had to go through a security check, right? Which was long and lengthy and take shoes off, take off, turn on all your, everything. I had to turn on every electronic device that I had. Yep. I had a camera, turn on your camera. Battery's not charging, charge the battery up. They made me charge up the battery. Yep. So enough to turn the camera on, Yeah. right? This and is, then, I got to, then I got to the gate. This is after I got through, like, the I was in the terminal. And when I got to the gate, before I could get to the actual, like, you know, the agent where she, like, you know, scans your ticket and lets you on the flight, like, the waiting area, there's another security check just like the one that I just left. And they did the same thing. Take off all your shoes. Turn on all your damn devices. What's this? Like, basically unpacked my entire carry-on bag, turned everything on, and then, then I got to the lady who let me on the plane. So I went through... Yeah. Three different screenings, if you count my immigration screening, went through immigration and customs, rechecked the bag, following that, went into the terminal, no security check, gate, so that's four checks. Yeah. And they found I nothing. I mean, that's the point, right? So, Better, and, more, have... and more, and I would say, and the other point I would make, and I'm gonna shut up, is these, and these checks were, I would argue, of higher caliber than what I've seen done by TSA. TSA. Yeah, so you have this situation where Richard enters, he has four rounds of checks at the airport. Now, someone who's a suspected terrorist, for the most part, I mean, we've heard over and over again that anyone who's on the radar is on the radar, right? I mean, it's it's rare that terrorists aren't on the radar at this point. Yeah. Uh, you know, across the world, our intelligence systems are incredibly sophisticated. Um, even the guy who uh, just did that kind of, you know, self uh, radicalized attack in London was was on the radar of their intelligence agencies. They knew. So we have the barrier of intelligence agencies both globally and in the country. Then you also have the barriers at the airport. You ask yourself, is this one thing necessary? And I don't know. Listen, I don't work for intelligence agencies, so I don't know what a credible threat what is have. and what isn't. But I say this, I've been to a lot of airports across the around the world, and I think their security measures seem to be Far more sophisticated well, than Israel's ours. is really good because they train their um, like version of the TSA guards to just grill you in the eyes, and they're trained to like. No, I mean, it, case in point, when you go to week, what are you hiding? When you go to London, right? When I, I've been to London a number of times, my grandma used to live there. My mom talked. We talk about all the time, like so. When you get into the immigration line before you even get to the man, like the man who's like you know stamps your passport, like the la like the, the lady who walks down the row, and then she just she's like you, and she she literally pulls people out the line out of random. Yeah. Like, we saw you when you got the plane. You, yeah. you. So you don't even make it to the guy who stamps your passport in the you're line. You're already, already you're already gone. Yeah. So you get off the plane, you get to the line to where you're getting, where they check your passport and your papers, and before you even get to the man, they pull, like, ten people. You, you, you. And you're like, damn, how do you know? So I just don't understand what this ban, how this ban's going to make us any safer. I think it's just going to be more inconvenient. And it's gonna be like it's gonna, it's another like just it's like just like as stupid as a Ziploc bag with three three ounce bottles, but not you can't have one nine ounce bottle, which is the same thing. 